in initial rate method what you do is let's say you have some reactants you vary the concentration of one of the reactant and observe the change in the reaction rate of the reaction by keeping the other reactants, the concentration of other reactants constant. I know it is difficult to comprehend. Slowly, gradually you'll understand. I'll explain each and every word. What did I say? That let's say there is a reaction A, B, C reacting to form products. The small A, B, C are the stoichiometric coefficient. Wonderful. Now the method involves the initial rate of the, what do you mean by the word initial rate? the rate when the reaction is about to start or you can say the time it is at that time when you started the observation the rate at that point right you take the known concentration known concentration of reactant and observe the rate at that point now what you do let's let's understand this thing the value of initial rate with the graph then you the picture becomes more clear right so what do you see is there's a graph it is a graph between the concentration of reactant versus time now you see the concentration is slowly coming down focus at this point this particular point this is the time when reaction started and at this point the value of rate is known as the initial rate I hope that makes sense. Wonderful. And we are taking into consideration the instantaneous rate of the reaction, right? Okay, at that point, the initial point. Okay, I hope the, the idea of initial rate is clear. Okay, now how this is going to help you to determine the order of the reaction. That's what the idea behind the initial rate method. That's why we are studying initial rate method. We, we want to figure out the order with respect to individual reactants and obviously the overall order. Let's see this. So what do you do is, remember this reaction, keep that reaction in your mind. It involves the comparison. This word is the keyword for the initial rate method. If I just want to replace initial rate method, I'll say, it should be replaced by comparison. Now, comparison of what? The comparison of rates, which rates? The comparison of initial rates. When? When you are taking different known concentrations of the reactant. Let's make it more clear. By varying the concentration of one of the reactant. You have A, B and C. You have three reactants, right? I'll vary one of the, let's say I'll vary the concentration of Initial concentration of one reactant that let's say that is that is going to be the A and the concentration of B and C is going to be constant. And then I observe, then I compare the different rates that I get. Okay. While other reactants are kept constant. The concentration of other reactants are kept constant. Okay. Wonderful. Let's see this mathematically. You have the you have the equation. ABC reacting to form products. The rate will be written as K A to the power P, B to the power Q, C to the power R. I hope you are clear with the fact A, B and C may or may not have some relation with P, Q and R. A, B, C, R, stoichiometric coefficient. P, Q and R are the individual orders with respect to the A, B and C. Wonderful. That's what is exactly written over here. P, Q and R are the orders of a reaction with respect to A, B and C respectively. Wonderful. Concentration. Now, I, I told you that one of the reactant is going to vary. The other reactants, the concentration of other reactants will be same. So, we are going to change the concentration of A by keeping both concentration of B and C as same. And then we will observe the change in the initial rate value. How? We take two different initial concentrations of A. Let, let's say them A01 and A02. They are the initial concentrations of reactant A. At this A0, at this point, A01 and A02, you'll have two values of rate of the reaction. Let's call them R1 and R2. So at R1, 
the rate law for R1, the rate law is written as K dash A01 raised to the power P. For another concentration of initial concentration of A2, we write rate law as R2 K dash A02 raised to the power P. Now, what is this K dash? That's the question. See, try to understand B and C, they are kept constant. So, we have derived a new constant K dash which is ultimately equal to the rate constant K, the concentration of B raised to the power Q into the concentration of C raised to the power R. Now, try to understand one thing. This K remains same and that's what I told you in the beginning of the session that the value of rate constant does not vary with the concentration of the reactant. It only depends on temperature. Is there anything written about temperature over here? Are you going to change the temperature? Not at all. The temperature is same. The only thing that you are varying is the concentration of one of the reactant or to be specific, the initial concentration of one of the reactant. Okay, wonderful. Now you have two rates, R1 and R2. The value is known for them. You yourself has taken the A01 and A02. That value is also known to you. So the only variable in this comparison. Now comparison of what? The comparison of R1 and R2. Let's compare them. That means let's divide them. Your K dash is nothing but K B to the power Q C to the power R. Wonderful. Let's let's divide R1 and R2. That's what the comparison is. And K dash, K dash will get cancelled. You know R1 and R2. You have taken the known concentration of A01 and A02. The only variable is P. And what is P? P is the order with respect to A. That's how using the initial rate method, you calculate individual orders. And similarly, the way you calculated P by varying the concentration of A, similarly, you can calculate Q just by varying the concentration of B and keeping A and C constant. And similarly, R can be calculated keeping the concentration of A and B as constant, only varying concentration of C. Okay, I hope you got it. Wonderful. So that's what is written over here following the same method. Q and R also can be calculated.